Chapter Three: Objectives. You have formulated the right decision problem. Now, before you rush into making the actual decision, pause and think hard about your objectives. What do you really want? What do you really need? What are your hopes, your goals? Answering these questions honestly, clearly, and fully puts you on track to making the smart choice. Why are objectives so important? They form the basis for evaluating the alternatives open to you. They are, in other words, your decision criteria. By making sure you have identified all your objectives, you will avoid making an unbalanced decision, one that, for example, considers financial implications but ignores personal fulfillment. In addition, a full set of objectives can help you think of a new and a better alternatives, looking beyond the immediately apparent choices. Objectives are very personal, but they need not be self-centered. Depending on the decision, the objectives you establish can reflect concerns for your family, your employer. Your community and the country, even the whole of a society. Imagine that you are a freelance writer, and you have just completed a long assignment, writing a computer training manual for a large company. Now you are looking for your next job. Your immediate inclination is to solicit similar work from other big companies. That course. Would fulfill your objectives for maximizing your income and building your business portfolio, but then you begin to think of other objectives that are also important to you: supporting your community, helping the less fortunate, broadening your experience. You decide to take a lower-paying job. Writing a fundraising letter and a brochure for a local hospice for AIDS patients. Even though you have foregone some income, you soon realize that by looking beyond your own concerns, you have made a wise decision. Let your objectives be your guide. Sometimes. The process of、uh, thinking through and writing out your objectives can guide you straight to the smart choice, without you having to do a lot of additional analysis. Here's a, a example. Imagine that your boss just has offered you a promotion, the new job which requires you to move across country from San Diego to New York City, has a considerably higher salary. Your gut reaction is great, just what I wanted. But careful thinking about your full set of objectives gives you a reason to hesitate. While the new position would be advantageous financially, the move would disrupt the lives of your spouse, your twelve-year-old twin boys, and yourself. Working with your family, you determine your most important objectives: to promote your family's quality of life, to further your professional development, and to contribute to your firm. When you look back, look back at the offer in light of these objectives, your view changes dramatically. You realize that your family's love of warm weather and outdoor recreation. Makes it like likely that their quality of life would suffer in New York. You see that although your new position would be challenging and satisfying, it is actually less suited to your talents and interests than your current job. And you decide that your contributions to your firm would be about the same in either position. The money would indeed be better in New York, but. Maximizing your income, you now see, is only one of your fundamental objectives. Your decision is suddenly clear-cut. You decline the promotion, 
explaining your reasoning in clear and compelling terms to your boss. Even when the answer isn't so obvious, the objectives you set will help guide your entire decision-making process, from defining alternatives at the outside, to analyzing those alternatives, to justifying the choice you ultimately make. Specifically, number one, object objectives help you determine what information to seek. You have uh, offered, you have been offered a job at a, a new employer. In setting up your objectives, you realize that the work environment is critically important to you. You log on to the internet and browse through your prospective employer's website to find out what it indicates about the firm's culture. Number two, objectives can help you explain your choice to others. Your boss asks you to justify a recent decision to sign a long-term service contract for your company's photocopying machines. Armed with your list of objectives, you walk her through your thought process, showing how your decision fulfilled the key objectives better than the other alternatives. Objectives determine a decision. This is the third. Objective determine a decision's importance and the, consequently how much time and effort it deserves. If the time of tomorrow's dentist appointment makes a little difference in what really matters to you, why fuss over it? Whenever you feel that your decision process is a bogging down or hiding off course, always focus back on your objectives. They will keep you on the right track. Watch out for these pitfalls. Remember the old saying, if you don't know where you're going, any route will get you there. Too often, decision makers don't take the time to specify their objectives clearly and fully. As a result, they fail to get where they want to go. Why? Often, decision makers take too narrow a focus. Their list of uh, objectives remains brief and cursory, omitting important considerations that become apparent only after they have made a decision. They concentrate on the tangible and quantitative, such as cost, availability, over the intangible and subjective, such as features, ease of use. Hard concerns drive after the soft. In addition, they tend to stress the short term, such as enjoy life today, over the long term, such as have a comfortable retirement. These missteps occur for two main reasons. First, many people spend too little time and effort on the task of specifying objectives. They feel they already know what they want and need. Without further reflection, they immediately pick an alternative that seems to solve their problem and then move on. Only later, when things turn out less well than anticipated, do they realize that they didn't really understand their objectives at all. But then, of course, it's too late. Second, getting it right isn't easy. Objectives don't just pop up in nice, neat lists. While you might think you know what you want, your real objectives may actually be submerged, buried beneath the desire others have for you, beneath societal expectations and norms, beneath everyday concerns. For important decisions, only deep soul searching will reveal what really matters to you. This kind of self-reflective effort perplexes many people and makes them uncomfortable. But the more relentlessly you probe beneath the surface of obvious objectives, the better the decisions you will ultimately make. Master the art of identifying objectives. Identifying objectives is an art, but is an art you can practice systematically. Follow these five steps. 
Step one, write down all the concerns you hope to address through your decision. Thrash about as much as necessary. Don't worry about being disorganized or mixing up major concerns with ones that seem trivial. This early in the process, too much orderliness will only inhibit your creativity. Use any many ways as you can think of to jog your mind about present, future, and even hidden concerns. Don't worry if you sometimes seem to be saying the same thing in different ways. Rephrasing the same concern may help you uncover important nuances. Flesh out your list by trying some of these techniques. Compose a wish list. Describe a, as completely as you can everything that you could ever want from your decision. What would make you really happy? Think about the worst possible outcomes. What do you most want to avoid? Consider a decision's possible impact on others. What do you wish for them? Ask people who have faced similar situations what they considered when making their decision. Consider a great, even if unfeasible, alternative. What's so good about it? Consider a terrible alternative. What makes it so bad? Think about how you would explain your decisions to someone else. How would you justify it? Your answers may uncover additional concerns. When facing a joint or group decision, when involving family or colleague, colleagues, for instance, first have each person involved follow the above suggestions individually, then combine the lists using the varied perspectives to expand and refine first-take ideas by initially freeing each person to search his or her mind without being limited by others' thoughts, you will get a more comprehensive list and more accurately reflects everyone's concerns. Using these techniques and others of your own devising, you will accumulate pages of notes describing what you most care about in relation to the decision you face. Step 2. Convert your concerns into succinct objectives. The clearest, the clearest and the most easily communicated form for objectives is a short phrase consisting of a verb and an object, such as minimize costs, mitigate environmental damage, and so on. Step 3. Separate ends from means to establish your fundamental objectives. Having drawn up your initial list of objectives, you now want to organize them. The challenge is to distinguish between objectives that are means to an end, having leather seats in your new car, for example, and those that are ends in themselves, having a comfortable and uh, attractive interior, for example. Separating means from ends is like uh, peeling an uh, onion. Each new layer looks different. The best way to do it is to follow the advice of the common Japanese saying, you don't really understand something until you ask five times. Why? Simply ask why, and keep asking it until you can't go any further. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, for example, uses the objective minimize emissions for evaluating many proposed programs to reduce air and water pollution. But is this objective an end or a means? Let's ask why and find out. So why do they want to minimize emissions? Because it will reduce pollutant concentrations. Why is this important? It will limit human exposure to the pollutants. Why is this important? Because exposure can damage people's health. And why is health damage an important concern? Health damage just is important. It is the end 
the EPA wants to arrive at. Everything else is a means of getting there. Asking why will lead you to what you really care about, your fundamental objectives, as opposed to your means objectives. Means objectives represent way stations in the progress toward a fundamental objective, the point at which you can say, "I want this for its own sake." It is a fundamental reason for my interest in this decision. Fundamental objectives constitute. The broadest objectives directly influenced by your decision alternatives. Consider this example: your initial notes on developing a plan for constructing your company's new distribution center include the objectives: minimize construction time and minimize time needed to get permits. You ask yourself why, and realize that these are means objectives. They lead to two fundamental objectives: minimize time before the distribution center is operational, and minimize cost of the facility. Your fundamental objectives depend on your decision problem. A means objective in one decision problem may be a fundamental objective in another. Suppose you have just turned fifty-five. And you plan to retire in ten years at a sixty-five. You face you face two related decision problems: how to invest your retirement funds now, and what to do during your retirement years. In the first case, a fundamental objective would be to accumulate as much money as possible for your retirement. In the latter case, having money is only a means objective. Asking several whys will lead you to a fundamental objective: achieve and maintain a good quality of life. Separating means and fundamental objective is critical because both kinds of objectives play important but different roles in the decision-making process. Number one, each means objective can serve as a stimulus. For generating alternatives, and can deepen your understanding of、uh, your decision problem. Asking how you might minimize construction time for the distribution center, for example, could lead to several good alternatives for shortening the time before the distribution center is operational, such as moving all needed construction materials immediately to the site. Number two, only fundamental objectives should be used to evaluate and compare alternatives. Sure, you want to do better in terms of your means objectives, but why? Only to do better in terms of your fundamental objectives. If you use a fundamental objective and it's a supporting means objective to evaluate the decision alternatives, you will give too much weight to that particular. Fundamental objective in your final choice. Step four: Clarify what you mean by each objective. You should, at this point, have a solid list of fundamental objectives. Now, for each fundamental objective, ask what do I really mean by this? Asking what enables you to. Clearly see the components of your objectives. Clarification will lead to better understanding, which in turn will help you to state the objective more precisely and see more clearly how to reach it. In addition, when it comes time to choose, you will be better prepared to appraise whether or not the objective is being met. For many objectives. The bottom line meaning will be obvious. Minimize cost, for example, means just that. Spend the least possible number of dollars. The meaning of other objectives can be more elusive. You want to minimize damaging health effects from a certain air pollutant, but exactly what health effects and to whom? You might want to maximize prestige in your. Professional field, but what do you mean by prestige? 
in whose eyes clarifying the meaning of an objective will help you achieve it. Step 5. Test your objective to see if they capture your interests. Having clarified each of your objectives, it's time to test them. Use your list to evaluate several potential alternatives, asking yourself if you would be comfortable living with the resulting choices. If not, you may have overlooked and misstated some objectives. Re-examine them. A second useful test is to see if your objectives would help you explain a perspective decision to someone else. If using your objectives as reasons and explanations would be difficult, you probably need to spend more time refining the objectives. What's unclear? What's missing? Practical advice for nailing down your objectives. You will more readily identify your fundamental objectives if you keep the following considerations in mind. First, objectives are personal. Different people facing identical situations may have very different objectives. For example, a single person investing for retirement may care only about a mutual fund's long-term value whereas a married person might also care about the fund's interim value, as it would help support her family in case of her early death. Different objectives will suit different decision problems. People tend to forget this obvious point. Hospitals should use uh, different objectives when hiring a chief fundraiser, for example, than when hiring a chief financial officer. Objectives should not be limited by the availability of or ease of access to data. Many people mistakenly focus on immediate, tangible, measurable qualities than listing objectives, but these may not reflect the essence of the problem. Using easy-to-measure but only partially relevant objectives is like a looking for a lost wallet under a street light because there is uh, more light there, even though you know you lost the wallet around the corner in a dark alley. Easily measurable objective won't always illuminate what really matters. Watch out for this trap. Next, unless circumstances change markedly, well thought of the fundamental objectives for similar problems should remain relatively stable over time. The key phrase here is uh, well thought out. Clearly, with a deeper reflection, objectives will change if it, they were not carefully derived in the first place. But uh, given thoughtful objectives and the uh, absence of uh, major changes in health, finances, and so on, fundamental objectives for similar problems will remain the same or change only slowly. If a perspective decision sits comfortably in your mind, you may have overlooked an important objective. Such late discoveries may strike you as a sign of a sloppy thinking, but that isn't always the case. Sometimes you must stare a decision in the face before a previously unrecognized objective leaps up. Consider this example. A committee established by a local school board was asked to organize a day-long citizens' conference on the future of the town's schools. The committee drafted an agenda using a list of objectives set by the board. To the committee's dismay, However, the board rejected, even though the agenda met all of the board's specified objectives. Further discussion revealed a previously unrecognized objective, a word highly controversial topics. The board saw this objective only when it was confronted with a decision about the meeting agenda. Okay, that's the end of chapter. Three.
objectives.